Now according to building code, I gotta have a three ply beam running the length of this deck. So what I've done, I've staggered these joints here to lock them all together. I got spikes in this way, then I got spikes that way, and I got spikes through here, and then I'm gonna sp spike it this way so that'll lock this all together nice and tight. And uh, the three ply, you have to stagger your joints. And uh, that's very easy to do. You just take uh, the length of your timbers, which is 16 feet, and you divide them by three. So in this case, I got uh, five feet, four inch for this one. And this one here is 10 feet, eight inch. And then I leave this one here at 16. And that way there, I stagger my joints so they're, they're uh, not run overlapping each other. Now I like to uh, pre-drill on the ends. It just keeps them from splitting. Now that I got my joints staggered, all I have to do is just lay in my 16 foot planks. There. Uh, jack comes in handy when you're working it alone. Okay, I'm setting this on uh, temporary blocks until I get everything leveled and squared up. And so far, she's running level. Now this is fairly easy to do. You just gotta butt them up, line up level with here, and tack them into place. Okay, my, my beam's level, but I've uh, taken some off of here. Taking the pressure off of this. What I do is just stick a, a wedge. Just to take, uh, take some pressure off that. Whenever you're doing any building, it's always great to have a few wedges around. They'll help you out a lot. And a good thing is your square, this here uh, is one and a half inches, which is the same thickness as your planks. So just trace both sides and it'll give you a proper width. These are pretty easy to install. First I just cut a little chunk of uh, two by eight. Get that in there. I'll do is make sure this timber is flush with here, lined up with my line, bring that clamp into place, and then it's quick connect. Quick connect again. Be sure you use these hanger nails. They're uh, they're a little heavier, and they won't cut off like a normal nail if it gets under stress.
1 16 and 3 quarters. Now you want to make sure you cut all your uh, joists the same length. Now I double, I double measure and I got uh, 1 16 and 3 quarters so now I'll cut all these the same. When you tone down these in, make sure you get your timber up close to your beam and your ledger also. Before I get too far, I want to check to make sure my deck is square, and that's really easy to do. First is, I know my joists are the same length, and I also know that the distance between the end of the joists are the same. So what I have to do is measure the diagonal measurement in both directions to see if it's square. Now I'm going to put the tape measure on the outside edge of this joist. Run it over here take a measurement. Now I've got 172 and 3 quarters. Now I'll take it to the corner of this joist. I have 173. So that's a difference of a quarter of an inch. And in a deck this size, that's really not that much. But just to show you how, if it was off quite a bit, how you would fix that. So your, your longer measurement is in this direction. You need to move your deck this, this way. So all I'm going to do is just move it with a quarter of an inch. I have to move it an eighth, which is uh, too close to call. But I'm just going to show you how, how I would do this. Just, just a jig, just jig it that way. And you can do that now that you, know, you don't have all your joists in here and the deck's too heavy to handle. So now I'm gonna recheck that. That's ridiculously close. Actually, that's right on, so we're good to continue. Now I wanna check the levelness of my deck. Now she's right on level. Actually, I have just a fraction of a bubble in this direction, and that's the way I'd like to have my deck just flowing away from the house. Just a fraction, just so any water or rain it will want to uh, go away from the house. Now in this direction, it's the, the bubble's dead on, and that's also where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my temporary blockings and put in the permanent block. Four and a half inches I have to cut. Now the code, we're supposed to be using a six by six. So I need to cut a four and a half piece off of this uh, six by six. Okay, four and a half. A square. That saw isn't designed for uh, six by six, but it still did a good job. I'm putting a sealer on here just to protect the freshly cut end. Before I finish putting all my uh, joists on, I want to attach my posts. And the way I do that is I take some, uh, this is uh, 
ice and uh, water shield for when you're roofing. It's uh, self-adhesive. Take my block. Now I cut it in uh, five and a half inch strip. Down there. this down next to the concrete. Here, I have it level. I actually have the bubble just a little bit to that side, so it's got just a fraction of a, a, a slope away from the house. Now I'm going to put a daub of construction adhesive on there. Slide that in. Now if you want, you can toenail a couple of screws in there or some nails, but uh, I don't expect this to move. Usually what I do is when I'm cutting my joists, I'll cut uh, half a dozen at a time, and then I pile them and uh, line, up the, line up the ends. And then I can just seal them all at once. And a good thing about doing it this way is uh, you have them lined up here. You can check the other end and you, you're sure that you have all your joists cut the same length. Yep, they're all, they're all the same. Something you should always remember to do when you're laying floor joists down is to check your lumber for crown, for a crown in it. That means a, a little bow this way because you want your crown now this one's uh, perfectly straight but you want your crown facing up always because over the years your deck will uh, tend to sag and that crown will kind of even everything out now this one's been warped in the sun so but don't worry about that they'll they'll go in advice when you're cutting your joists make sure that you cut on the line actually uh, a half a saw blade width across the line is good that way there you know that you're not pushing your uh, beam out and they fit in there nice and snug really twisted piece of timber here that uh, it's going to need some assistance in getting down into these hangers so I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is make myself a little peavy. And if you're not familiar with the word peavy, uh, people use that in the woods to roll big logs around. So I just got some scrap lumber. See I want that around seven and a half. Thank you. 
Yeah, ever so often as you're adding your joists, you want to just take an eyeball down your beam and make sure you're not knocking anything out of line. And this one here, as you can see, it's keeping pretty straight. What we're doing, I'm putting this support board on here to keep these uh, joists from bowing and, uh, until I get my decking put on. And it's very easy, I'm just going uh, 16 inch each, each timber and I'll line them up to make sure they stay straight. Are you really? Never helping. 